Trey Williams, film reporter with The Wrap here at Sundance in The Wrap Lounge with director and cast of Relive. Hi, guys. Nice, Hi. To, nice Hi. to see you. Hi, Trey. Thank you guys for coming in. Tell us a little bit about the movie, um, you know, what it's about, and maybe, you know, what the um, inspiration you know, for it was. Uh, the movie is uh, about this horrific loss uh, that Detective Jack Radcliffe, played by David Oyelowo, mm-hmm. suffers in the very beginning of, of the film. His entire family, his brother, his beloved niece, um, are murdered in an event that appears to be a murder-suicide, um, which is irreconcilable to David's character because his brother, while being kind of a screw-up, is a, a good man. And um, it, it, in the middle of his uh, grief cycle, um, he gets a phone call uh, from her phone from her cell phone Um, and he doesn't even answer it at first but the next time she calls he does answer it and her voice is on the other end of the phone so this movie is sort of uh, this very dark territory wherein uh, David's character is allowed to sort of possibly maybe have an opportunity to talk to the dead maybe to save her Mm -hmm. and it turns out that she's calling from three days before she died um, I'm curious what you know drew you guys to the project. When I read the script, um, I-, I was intrigued, and I knew it was going to be a, a challenging uh, movie to film if I was to be a part of it. But I like a challenge, and I knew I would learn a lot, and, and my acting ability would go up with being around Mr. Jacob and Mr. David. Um, And and it it was fun to do. It was hard and it was something that I had never done before. That's also why I wanted to do it. So it was a blessing. Yeah, and for me, it was the the fact that even though it had these genre elements, even though it had this complex, wonderfully complex uh, uh, plot, ultimately it was about love. It was about um, a love that would engender a man to reach through space and time to try and save his niece and for her to do the same for her family as well. And so those themes of hope and love and loss are of course universal and then that was really what, what caught my attention when I read the script. What's the inspiration behind you know the the film or the. But no, I I I don't actually think it's that important. Uh, what my particular uh, losses have been, we sure. all uh, at one time or another are going to experience uh, mm-hmm. uh, some kind of uh, uh, death that rocks us to our core, um, and uh, it could be a, a violent thing uh, adjacent to us, or it could just be you know a disease. Um, uh, and uh, there's no escaping that. Right. Uh, and so I've just happened to have some experiences <laughs> with that. <laughs> um, I'm curious, like, how you, you know, bonded the two, like, the very, like, universal and, you know, thing of loss, you know, with this very supernatural reaching through space and time and um, what that was, you know, like to tap into and to have to, you know, play with that. Well, we talked about tone a lot when we were doing the film, and I think the well, I know the tone that we went for is something very grounded, something that feels entirely plausible and realistic. Uh, we didn't want to sort of had a, have a thunderclap that splits time or some kind of earthquake or something of that nature, mm-hmm. which we probably have seen in other movies before. Um, it was a theoretical, in a sense, and then everything else is literal. And that, to me, is, is I think, the special quality of the film because you, you forget the fact that there is an element of the premise that is far-fetched and then you just start transposing your own life onto this situation and going what would I do? Go get her or go save, make that call Ashley or you know, whatever it is there's a real momentum to the film on the basis of its plausibility. We don't let the, the audience off the hook because it has this conceit to it.